Last episode, Nicholas Claxton uh, requested a trade, and today we're going to give him his request. Uh, who are we to, to hold him away from being whatever he wants to be? Um, we dealt with this with Harden. We dealt with this with Reed. We dealt with this with KD. And I'm okay with getting somebody out of the locker room if they don't want to be there, especially since our ultimate goal is to win a championship, not this season, but eventually. Um, and if he is saying to me that he is not going to resign, we might as well get rid of him now while we can still get some value from him. He is uneasy. Um, he's unsettled about the current situation, and his gut is telling him this summer. I'm undecided at this point. Uh, oh, well. Wasn't it different last time? Either way, I saw a lot of comments like, Kitty, why even do it and just, just see what the season is? I kind of like the ripple in the series. I like the ripple in the series. And, you know, I've been around the league a bunch, looking at different teams, trying to figure out what makes sense for me personally and then also for the team that will be trading for him. So I'm looking at teams that are selling, that are rebuilding, because remember, Nicholas Clax is only 24 years old at this point, so... If he could go to a team and they could convince him to stay, I mean, he's an 86 overall with a morale, morale boost, 87. It's weird that he's got a morale boost when he's upset, or whatever. Um, he's a build, he's a building block piece. I wanted him to be a building block piece for us, but unfortunately, that's not going to be the case. So if we trade him to a younger team or something like that, um, it can really help him out um, and help them out. So I'm looking around the league, right? The Jazz, somebody in the comment section like, yo, you should go out to Walker Kessler, but they also got Victor Wibanyama, so it don't make sense for them to trade for another center. Kind of send him to the Hornets would be cool. They got a lot of centers, so we'd potentially get one back, but they ain't got nothing of value other than LaMelo, who's not even untouchable, so technically we can try to trade for LaMelo. Nah, I don't want to do that. The Miami Heat already made, they sell a move, and they still got Bam. The Atlanta Hawks are the reason we even noticed this, because they offered us Yeka Kongo in the first round pick for Claxton. That's just not good enough value for us. We like Onyeka Kongo a lot, but he's one uh, year younger than, than Nicholas Claxton, but uh, significantly worse and less bads and all of that, so that's not making us really excited. The Grizzlies just traded for DeAndre Aiden. Um, the Clippers don't have anything of value for us, especially because these two dudes are older on the last year of the deal. They will probably make a trade in this video. It just won't be with us. The Bulls, the, the Bulls had something that was interesting to me, and that was Lonzo Ball. Lonzo Ball kind of fits the mold of a player that we want. He's going to catch a shoe. He's going to get us into our sex. The only thing that scares me about potentially trading for Lonzo Ball is the fact that he is on a one-year deal as well. If they let me go, where's his contract stuff? Uh, it's one-year deal plus a player option. And I just don't know what type of player he would be if he came onto the team. Will it be basically us? He, he wants to re-sign with this team. He's extremely loyal with the Bulls. But I don't know if that would carry over to us. Of course, he got the injury history, which scares me quite a bit. So I don't really know. I mean, if you look at his body, everything is good. Everything is green. So maybe that injury history is just real life and not now. So I had talked myself out of potentially trading for Zoe. And now I'm kind of talking myself back into it. Um, I'll, I'll add him to the list. I'll add him to the list. I had somebody else in mind, but Lonzo Ball adds some type of instability, though, because of that option. And again, he, he might be interested in re-signing with them, but that don't mean he'll come here and also be interested in re-signing. He's averaging 13, 8, and 5. Um, he's shooting 42% from 3. Uh-oh. He is having a really, really good season. Ooh, Lonzo Ball, do we? I mean, the Bulls are bad. Oh, I'm sorry. They're not that bad. They're the 10th seed. I don't know why I saw them and thought that they were bad. Well, they just traded for CJ McCollum, who's a point guard, and Lonzo Ball is better. But CJ starting over him, I'm sure that rubs him the wrong way. And I, he might be saying, hey, I'm willing to, to resign now. But now that they traded for CJ, maybe not so much. The Bulls are clearly in rebuild mode and will likely look to dump players for picks. Um, okay, good to know. Uh, the Bucks again, nothing really there. It brings us here, um, where the Trailblazers are selling. Now, I'm not saying Dame is the option because he's 32 years old and he's already started to regress a little bit. I don't want to do it. He's 50, 40, 90. He's stellar. He's great. We all know that. We all know that. We all know that. He don't fit the timeline of some of the other players. Um, basically, if we trade for Dame, if we don't win the championship by next season, L trade. Even though he is in the contract for as long as the NBA is going to be around, which is 100 years. Anthony Simon has three years left on this deal. Shaden Sharp is coming for a spot. We've, we've done videos where Shaden Sharp's progression has him in a 90 overall club by year four. So in my mind, and he should look at the splits. I mean, I mean, the free throw could be better, but like the, he's doing his thing. In my mind, Anthony Simons is somewhat fair game. And that, and that was my initial direction going into things. And there's a couple of ways we could play this. Now, he's 6'3 at IMG Academy. We all know that. Right now on the season, he's averaging only four assists and one and a half turnovers. So assist to turnover ratio is not great. He's an off guard. But if you really take a look 
and some of his playmaking stuff. He's above average uh, passer. The ball handling is great. The passing IQ is great. The vision is above average for a shooting guard. There's a world where we might be able to run him at the one. The big thing is that this defense is god off. So I don't want to put him. So to, hypothetically, we can run Terrence Mann, him, Mikhail, Cam, and Cat. Defensively, we might struggle. So I'm thinking we can run him at the one. We can run Mikhail at the two still. We can run Cam at the three, a four up in the air, potential second trade. So, and, and then Cat at the five. The defense is the biggest downside to all of this, right? I mean, everything else is amazing. I mean, we know that. And now I'm basically trying to pick between... Uh, Pascal's not on the list anymore. Between Lonzo and Anthony, the, the, what do we need more? Because Anthony's more of a personal shot creator type player. And at the guard position, we don't have a ton of that other than Cam Johnson. Lonzo's more of an ultimate glue guy. He gonna set you up. He gonna catch and shoot. He not gonna get to the basket often and things like that. And he's also only on a one year deal. Where Anthony's under contract for three years and he's younger. He's at least, he's two years younger. He's actually a higher overall. I think we should go after Anthony right now, and hopes that he can progress to the ninety overall club eventually. Well, does it make sense for them? I'm gonna say yeah, potentially. And the reason I'm saying that is because right now their center is Nurkic, and let's be real, Nurkic is not that. Um, so Nurkic's three-point rate is an 82. That's actually insane. I know he can hit it every once in a while, but 82. Um, and Nurkic is not the guy that you want. But you can you can build a solid future team with Nicholas Claxton, Shaden Sharp, and some stuff. They also got Chris Murray, who started for them this year. So they they could potentially get some things. Now they even have to try to move use of Nurkic eventually, um, which I don't think will be too too hard. Um, but I think I'm going to try to go get Anthony Simons and try to figure out what that looks like. It's, I don't think it's a simple one-for-one one because, well, uh, we got to make up $13 million. So in this trade, we'd have to throw in Duncan Robinson, which hurts them. Or we could throw them Vontae Graham. But again, they already got guard play. Oh, they don't really have a backup point guard right now. So in this hypothetical, we could give them Vontae Graham to back up Damian Lillard. And contractually, everything makes sense. I would love to like throw him a, a lottery protected something something. But we can't, for, we can't lottery protect any of our picks right now. It's all will be unprotected. I'm a little bit afraid to offer this. If I'm being honest with you. I was about to say, we'll give them Marcus Sasser. Marcus Sasser has, holds no value to them. No value. Like, not even a little bit. Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll keep that. I'm trying to think, what if we took... Oh, no, the contract, it don't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I was going to say, what if we took on the contract? Um, but then we're just giving them more longer-term deal, uh, longer -term deals. I mean, Vontae Graham is not bad. He's just kind of undersized. Oh, I said he's not. He's shooting 28% for the field this season. Talking about, he ain't bad. He's, 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 he's definitely not good. Um, another player that I, I thought about quite a long time, for a long time, was uh, Jalen Brunson. Uh, because the Knicks are not good right now. They actually, I think the Knicks are selling. Um, I, I got to look at every option, man. This is a big time trade. Oh, I'm sorry. They're one game over 500. But they might be selling? I, why did I think about them? They must be selling. Yeah, they're selling. So, okay. So, I saw Jalen Brunson. We could pair Mikael Bridges and Jalen Brunson back together for the first time at college. It could have been cool. Um, but the fact that they're above 500 makes me like, nah. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna offer the trade. I'm gonna offer that trade straight up and see what they thinking, see what their head is at. Claxton, again, if it was up to me, you'd be here for the long run until the end of the series. You're a DP. I'm giving them a defensive player of the year candidate. Keep that in mind, because it's not it, Claxton is not just 15 and 11. He's a DPOY candidate. He's number five. I'm giving him up for Anthony Simons, who's averaging 20. He's having a good season. Offer it. It's done. It's done, 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 it's done. I cannot believe we just pulled off that trade. That's step one of the process. Step two is going back. Because right now, after that trade, we are a small team. Carthony Towns is seven foot, but our second highest play, tallest player is 6'9". Uh, like, everybody is short, short, short. And we need to figure out, um, after that deal, how we can get more size into the lineup. Uh, we could go to some of these rebuilding teams that might have older players that can help. But like Maxi, oh, Maxi Cleaver's contract's crazy. Um, but like something like that. Go to some of these older teams that are rebuilding. Like Trey Lyles is 6'9", but Trey Lyles can low-key kind of help us. Um, so I'll, I actually add him to my list. Three-year contract, $15 million. That's actually not too bad of a deal for him. He's going to rebound a little bit. He's going to hit the three-point shot. I kind of like the idea of bringing in Trey Lyles. Uh, selling teams. 
Oh, Larry Nance is here. Now, he's undersized for a center, but I think I can run him at the four and get away with it because he rebounds well. He can still stretch the floor a little bit. Now, his perimeter defense probably not elite for a power four, but I'm going to add Larry Nance to the list. Again, this is a selling team, so we might be able to get, get him for relatively low. Zach Collins plays for the Clippers, who are a selling team. Uh, he's a 6'11 uh, power four, or center power four mix. Can shoot it a little bit. Um, the defense, interior defense is below average, can rebound it a little bit. I'll add them to the list. Again, we're just thinking about backup players that can soak up some minutes um, at those positions. And, I mean, this team has a ton of centers. Nick Richards, yo, Nick Richards might be a player that we could get. I know in real life he signed an extension, but they got four centers right here that, that should be getting minutes between Ware, Coloco, Richards, and Williams. We might be able to snag Nick Richards for the low low. Oh, man, that's, that actually could, could be really good. Um, even though I'm kind of more looking for a four, Grant Williams is undersized. I'm kind of more looking for a four, but we can't be picky. If we got a guy there that can potentially help us out, we, we got to make that deal to make it happen. So Trey Lyles, Larry Nance, Zach Collins, and Nick Richards are all of the people that we're targeting. Remember, the trade deadline is just a few days away, less than a week away. So if we do a trade right now, it's going to basically be the last trade um, of the season. Trey Lyles is more valuable than some of these other dudes, and that makes sense. He's under contract for a few years. While we got two years left in Aaron Nance at 31 years old, uh, Zach Collins got two years left, and then um, Nick Richards is, is unrestricted after this year. Trey Lyles got three years. So I'm going to go out to Trey Lyles first, man. I think Trey Lyles can really help us, and I'm going to say Trey Lyles' name one more time. That's it. That's a wrap. Uh, so, they, yeah, they got a lot of fours here. Isaiah Stewart. John Isaac. John Isaac can run our four. I'm going to try to trade for John Isaac. Now, I don't have a lot. I do not have a lot. It would have to be them saying they won't dunk in, but then again, the contracts don't work. And yeah, yeah, they, they basically took on a lot of weird contracts to, to bring out this team. I want to see what Trey Finder has for John Isaac because I, who he would low key be perfect. They want a first round pick in 2025. Uh, a first round pick in 2025 or a first round pick. This is the Suns pick, right? It is the Suns pick. I can't do that deal. I can't do that deal. I don't think he's that valuable. Ooh, a draft a stats player, huh? From Serbia? What you good at? Can you shoot? Mid-range jump shot. Okay, okay, okay. Post score, small forward, shooting guard. Why is his post control so high at the shooting guard position? What the heck? Um. Yeah. I don't want to give a first round pick for a backup. I will say that much. I don't want to give a first round pick for a backup. But bro, low key, John Isaac completes our roster. And I'm saying that because that adds another defensive element alongside Carthony Towns. If you don't know, John Isaac in this game is ridiculous on the defensive side of the ball. Let's see what type of numbers. He's averaging four points per game on terrible splits. You can't tell me he worked for first round pick. This is this is his splits. Um, the shooting is questionable. Interior defense above average. Perimeter defense well above average. Steals are best in the world. Blocks are best in the world. The rebound, it could be better for a four. The lack quick. Yo, I low-key really, really want John Isaac on the team. Um, how can we make this happen? Because, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I think we, we, woo we. Um, two-year deal. Okay. So, in this hypothetical we, ha we have to give up Duncan. And yeah, they just have a bunch of solid people. Oh, we take Maxi's contract back? Okay. All right. We would have to. Oh. We would probably have to give them one of the young dudes. We'd probably have to give them one of the young dudes. Um, I mean, per 36, Grady is killing it. Per 36, Jet is killing it. Oh, man. That's that's too much value. That's too much value, right? That's too much value. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm going to offer this. They're going to say no. They would do a pick swap between the Suns pick and their pick in 2025. By 2025, oh, this team's going to be really good. Remember, we're in 2024. So this is next year, right? Yeah, yeah. This is next year. They got Jay, They got Kay Cunningham, Jay Nivey, Jalen Duran, and Cam Whitmore. This team's going to be good next season. For sure. So a pick swap means that we would get the worst of the pick between them and the Suns. But maybe the Suns are good next season too. But the way the Suns are playing right now, the way the Suns are playing right now, makes me think that, that like 2K is not going to let the Suns' success translate. And if I trade a potential lottery pick for John Isaac, who again at 26 might be done getting better, then I feel like I'm losing the trade a lot. But then again, the Suns have Devin Booker and Kevin Durant. And the re one of the reasons why they suck this year is because Devin Booker missed half of the season so far. Right? I wonder if I could get out of here without doing that. 
I would I would rather give you our own first round pick because by 2027 I'm pretty confident we're gonna be a playoff team. I'm protected. See again in real life you can add protections. I don't know why 2K doesn't allow you to add protections. I'm gonna add a 2027 first. They still say no. Can you give me a counter? They really want this swap. Ooh, I can't do it for John Isaac, man. Can I somehow turn this into a three teamer? Can we turn this into a, a three teamer somehow? We don't have anything of value. That's the real problem. That's the real problem. We don't have anything of value that we don't want to give up. That's what I mean. That we don't want to give up. Because even like Derrick Jones Jr., what, he's not doing anything. But he's a live threat and he's fun to play with when I'm actually on the sticks. Terrence Mann was just traded for so we can't trade him away. Um, Dayron Sharp is a restricted free agent this season. And I, I really do like Dayron as a backup. So for a backup, I'm making $2 million. That's perfect. The two young dudes, I want them, I want to at least give them a season before I make any trades and because I don't want to regret trading one of these young players away from a dude that's going to come off our bench potentially. Just as Winslow, we just brought back and free agency. So it's really just like take Duncan Robinson's contract, who uh, by the 36, he's averaging 108 points per game. So per 36, he's the greatest player of all time. So th th that should make somebody interested, right? I'm going to go into free agency and I'm going to sign some people for the minimum. Um, right now, another point guard would kind of help, even if he don't get no PT, just to have another point guard on the roster, and then another center. Um, and again, these are players that are going to come in and, and not play, but we just need bodies right now. Chris Dunn, welcome to Brooklyn. Winnie Gabriel, welcome to Brooklyn. Okay. All right. We're not trading any of those players. Don't think we about to do like a classic KLT for Q rebuild and challenge move. No, not that. I'm doing all of this. I didn't even realize that the, the Pistons are really, really, really good right now. I forgot we played against the Pistons the other day. And you know what? The John Isaac play I don't even remember John Isaac playing when we played against them the other day. I just remember Kay Cunningham giving us the, the business. Um, so they're really good right now. So maybe, oh my God, look at his injury history. Uh, yeah, that's a little bit scary. I, I will say that. He's only playing 20 minutes a game for y'all, man. And you got Isaiah Stewart. You got Trey Lyles, who now is only average six. Okay, I guess we might have to settle for Trey Lyles. Let's see what uh, Trey fighting for Trey Lyle, see what happens. None of the teams that we're interested in are interested in our pieces because our pieces is like, hey, you want to take Duncan Robinson and two second round picks? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Okay. I right, spent too much time there. So potentially, ooh, they want Dayron to start. I don't think I could do that. But potentially our lineup could look like this. Um, Like our starting lineup could look like that. Now we'd have to make sure everybody's in a position, the right positions. Um, and it looks cool. I actually really do like this lineup look. Um, number 21 for Anthony Simons. So Anthony Simons wore the number two and the number three at AMG. Both of them are, are unavailable. Wore number 24 his rookie season, also unavailable. Um, so how the heck, what number do we get this man? It can't be one of those ugly numbers, bro. We can't have him out here in the ugly number. We actually don't have a, a lot of great numbers. He wore number two before and he wore number one before. So I guess we could put him in the number 21. Um, unless we want to have him take the number of like Marcus Sasser. Yeah, you can wear number zero. Marcus Sasser, he's a rookie. He, he don't he don't deserve to have his the good numbers. We gonna put Marcus Sasser in the number the, the number 15. There you go, Sasser. And we give an Anthony assignments to number zero. Yep, that's how we're gonna do it. Uh, man, I, we got to figure out this last trade before this trade deadline before we start simulating because I think we are still too thin. I think we're too thin and too too small. You know what I was just saying to myself? What am I talking about? What, what, did I just say that Derrick Jones Jr. is like untouchable, basically? Did I just say that? Oh, well, he's not having a good season, but I like playing with him in the... Man, if Derrick Jones Jr. can be the determinant factor in making one of these trades happen, best believe we moving him. So let me go back and look at these teams and figure out how we can get more size in this lineup, uh, even if that means moving... Ooh, now they rebuilding and he's young. He's 23. He's a young dude in the lineup. You know what? Nah, 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 nah. I'm gonna have to sign him. Can we go back to the John Isaac thing potentially now that I'm like, hey, we'll give you Derrick Jones Jr. Who's, who's slightly worse, um, but can still potentially do something. And now that I think about it, with Derrick Jones Jr.'s four and, and who is it? Who is it? Um, and Duncan Robinson's 18, that, that's, that's $22 million in salary potentially. So we can... Shoot, a little bit higher than like minimum contract type players. Can I still get Lonzo? He's making $20 million. He's making $20 million. It's rebuilding time for them. So they will want prospects or draft picks rather than aging veterans unless they are an expiring deal. Noted. 
I would give up that Suns pick for Lonzo Ball. Uh, the, the Bulls weren't interested, by the way. <laughs> it was a big brain uh, the thought that did not turn into anything. Um, Obi Toppin at 25 years old, going to be unrestricted, so I can't really say I want that, but I think it could be interesting. Uh, because Bruce Brown is here too. Did Bruce Brown just get traded? Because he was on the Wizards. Yeah, he was on the Wizards earlier, so he did get traded. Josh Okoge hasn't played this season. Offensive rebound of an 85. Do we make a New York New York City to Brooklyn trade potentially? Will we try to get Toppin and Josh Okoge? I don't know if you realize this. This whole episode is us trying to figure out this trade deadline. There is no gameplay. Um, I haven't even done like trade finder. I just I, I'm not gonna accept any of these deals, but I'm just curious what the value sits at. Um, the Bulls have Mezzi and then Alex Caruso, who doesn't translate in game, doesn't, don't write, like that trade, don't like that trade, I don't like that trade. I said Bruce Brown, I, that, what did I say, uh, Josh Okoge, but they want a first round pick, I can't do that. I mean, yeah, we're, we're asking some team to take on a big contract that still has an additional year. So you traded for a year and a half of Duncan Robinson and not just one year. Exchange big bad contracts. John Isaac, they want that Brooklyn pick, they want our pick for 2027. And they're giving us a 2026 Memphis. Ooh, that actually is kind of interesting to me now. That's kind of interesting to me. Um, Evan Fournier is really, really bad. Uh, and I low-key thinking about trying to route him to a third team. This trade ain't as bad. Derrick Jones Jr., we love you, my boy. The three-point shot is there. He, he, he had a, mo a moment in the season where he had three back blocks that were really impressive. But at the end of the day, he's an undersized power forward and we need size. And Jonathan Isaac is 6'10 and he, he does the defensive stuff. We'd be giving up Duncan Robinson, who again is averaging 108 points per game per 36, which is dope. And we also be giving him a 2027 20, unprotected, which is a lot. But I am a firm believer that we will not be missing the playoffs in this series. You know what I'm saying? So in 2027, 20, I feel good that we're going to be fine. And then the Phillies second round, if they give us a 2026 20, top three protected, you got yourselves a deal, man. You got yourselves a deal. Okay. So now we got Cat of the... F let, me get, let me get these positions right. Hey, low-key, William Gabriel might actually play for us. He might play back a four. He might play back a four. He got a lot of energy. He can hit a three-point shot occasionally. He's going to rebound, right? He's going to offensive rebound specifically. He might run some four for us this season. We'll test that out because we really don't have um, any other options. Um, I am going to test Anthony at the one. He's got the playmaking chops. You just got to see him put it into work. You know? So Anthony Bridges, Johnson, Isaac... Number eight. Oh man, he's worth the number one his entire life from, at, at Florida State in high school. I'm looking up pictures of him in high school um, where he also went to IMG. Did not know that. Um, so look at that. Where he wore the number one. So as long as he has played basketball, he has been one. Um, they gave him eight. Eight is a very beautiful number. So I'm, I'm going to let him keep eight. I'm going to let him keep eight. Uh, yeah, Wayne Gabriel might, I'm going to change Wayne Gabriel's position to power four just to make it like all pretty with the things. And I'm going to have to make a new rotation and everything. I think, I think that's it. And I'm going to spend some time to get these rotations right because they're not going to be good if I left them. Um, Wayne Gabriel out of nowhere is going to get real playing time for us. Wow. I did not see that comment when I just signed him in free agency. Um, I do want to find Grady some minutes too. So we'll work on that. Uh, so yeah. That's our deadline. Before we get out of here, I want to try to put together the blockbuster trade at the deadline, just like I did earlier with the Jimmy Butler one. And I think it has to do with either Kawhi Leonard or Paul George of the Clippers. And I think it has to do with the 76ers and Tobias Harris. Now, I don't know what type. Okay, so they got basically two tradable first round picks in this. 32-year-old Kawhi um, on the last year of his deal, basically. Um, he's got a player option, which I don't know, maybe he'll take. Um, on a selling team, I think Tobias Harris, James, uh, Najee, two first-round picks is what gets the job done. Now, some people might be like, hey, we want Tyrese Maxey. I just don't think that's true. Maybe you take a chance on B-Ball Paul in there, too. Damian Jones. Or does it make more? Does this trade more make sense for Paul George, who's a little bit worse um, than Kawhi? Maybe the Kawhi package is a, is a lot bigger than this because he is still Kawhi Leonard now. He's averaging 20 points per game, and he's played 52 out of 52 games. Um, and then Paul George is averaging about 20 points per game, too. He's also played every game this season. So what makes more sense? If we, I feel like if we're going to trade Kawhi, you might want a little bit more, right? Two first-round picks for Paul George. Boom. The, who? B-Ball Paul declines to waive his no-trade clause. Okay. So we'll just, do it with, we'll just do it without you then. I mean, I guess that doesn't matter. 
And the 76ers have pulled off a trade to get Paul George to run him on the at the three. And well, Toby is going back to, to LA. Next trade, we might find a spot um, for Kawhi Leonard as well. But he's on the last year of his deal. So that, you know, uh, that makes it a little bit tougher to figure it out. But uh, I think we, we just found a trade for the 76ers that can help them potentially win a championship. And obviously, that's the ultimate goal. Their new lineup is Harden, Maxi, PG, Jay Crowder, and Joel Embiid. That team is nasty. Um, and then the Clippers. What, what other player or team is like a Kawhi Leonard piece away? Can they convince themselves? Wait, how old is Kawhi Leonard? How old is Kawhi Leonard again? Is he 32? 32 is pretty old, man. I was going to say, can the, can the Knicks convince themselves, even though technically they're rebuilding, can they convince themselves to trade away R.J. Barrett in a, a big package with, I don't know, some of the younger dudes is down here to get Kawhi Leonard. They gonna have the pick equity. Ooh, I'm kind of rocking with it low-key. I'm gonna... Hey, we're rebuilding the Clippers. The Clippers are getting their, their head start to the rebuild. I'm gonna look, I'm gonna keep looking around the league, but the Knicks make sense, I think. Because the other team that will be interested is this team, but they don't even have no pick equity to make the Kawhi Leonard thing work. We're not interested. The Nuggets aren't interested. The Pacers aren't. Yeah, not, no other team would... I mean, a lot of teams are probably interested, but they don't have the, the moves to make it happen. Oh, this feels wrong to see him on this team, man. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say the Clippers are selling, and the Kawhi Leonard, Kawhi Leonard is going to move for R.J. Barrett, plus Q Grimes. But to make the money match, we have to throw in Kelly Oubre. Quentin Grimes is a young 23-year-old piece who's having a rough season after a good sophomore year. Um... You get back Zach Collins, which is just there for the money aspect. You don't really need Zach Collins. Maybe you ride him to a new team, New York. And Patrick Baldwin Jr., and he's not playing at all. Um, but actually, Patrick Baldwin Jr. might be a player that sticks around during the rebuild, you know? So Damian Jones instead. There we go. Um, Kelly Oubre, Quentin Grimes, R.J. Barrett, three first-round picks. The Detroit pick for this year. Detroit, again, is a three-seed at the moment, so this pick is not extremely valuable. You got a New York pick for next year and a New York pick for 2028. Oh, I have to take over the Knicks because the Knicks aren't interested in that. <laughs> yes, you are. You now get TJ McConnell in the trade. The trade deadline extravaganza is done. The Clippers have hit the reset and got some good draft capital. Got RJ Barrett and some pieces. Now RJ and GG can hoop together. Um, they can make more trades to sell off some more of these older people like... Um, uh, um, uh, selling TJ Warren to get a point guard because you don't have one of those. Um, yeah, the the, Cl the Clippers the Clippers are hitting the reset button after some unsuccessful years. Now they're bad, so that just makes them even worse. Nineteen and thirty three. Um, good luck. And now the Knicks, who are you know towards the middle right now, have a new lineup of Brunson, Quickly, Kawhi, Randall, and Bag. Off the bench, they still got Obi Toppin, Jericho Sims, Bruce Brown, and now TJ McConnell, who they needed a backup point guard. I think I think the Knicks look kind of good. And Kawhi's going to age well. Kawhi's going to age well. All right, that's the trade deadline extravaganza, man. Um, some big things happen, even though the trade deadline officially ain't until next week. And some more stuff might happen next episode. I don't know. But if you enjoyed it, uh, leave it a like. We're going back to just take over our Brooklyn Nets. Um, yeah, what an episode, man. What an episode.